Welcome to Orange Coast Unitarian Universalist Church. My name is Yulis Aiden, and I'm your worship associate today. I'm joined by Beth Syverson, our Director of Music Ministries, and Karen Magoon Pearson, who is our Director of Religious Education for Children and Youth, in welcoming you this morning. Our Reverend Sean Wilshire is not leading the service today, but she has a special message for you. Hello, Rumors and Zoomers. So I'm away this week, but my spirit is with you. For those of you who are new to the church, maybe you're just checking us out or curious about Unitarian Universalism, welcome, glad you're here. You are in for a treat. This is a wonderful, friendly, fabulous, just all around spectacular community. I hope you can get to know them because it can be kind of tough to get to know a new community. But here's the thing, just hang in there, join in one of the activities and before long, you'll get to know people and then this becomes your church. Well, today we've planned a wonderful service for you, just blending music and word to bring together a helpful and hope-filled message. We hope it will feed your soul. So without further ado, let's go. We also would like to recognize the many volunteers that have helped to put this service together today. In addition, this morning we are delighted to have Casey Marie Pendle. Casey Marie Pendle hails from a spiritual yet non-religious background, finding Unitarian Universalism by way of theater, and became a member at the UU Church Fullerton in 2017, where she has formally served as worship chair and on their board of trustees. As a lifelong actor, she has a, also a bachelor degree in theater from Chapman University. She is currently pursuing a Master's of Divinity from Midville Lombard Theological School and will serve the Unitarian Universalist Church in Anaheim and Tapestry Unitarian Universalist. We respectfully recognize that our church property rests on Ahajimund and Tongva land. I would like to invite you also to open a chat box uh, and, and say hello this morning if you are on Zoom. As Unitarian Universalists, we have many different beliefs, but rather but we are one loving community. We are bound together not by a common set of rules or beliefs, but rather a covenant. A covenant is simply a promise, a promise that whatever our beliefs, we accept one another and encourage each other in spiritual growth. We affirm that all life has inherent value and that all existence is interconnected. We strive for justice and compassion in our deeds and relationships, and we are committed in creating a welcoming community with our regard to the traits that sometimes divide people. To our rumors, we invite you to silence your cell phones. For our Zoomers, we invite you to say hello in the chat. I want to extend a special welcome to visitors. If you are seeking a spiritual home, we hope that you will find it here. Later in the service, we will have an opportunity for you to introduce yourself if you'd like to do so. Let our worship begin with the lighting of our chalice as we say our unison affirmation. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. To dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another. This we affirm together. Good morning, everyone. Our opening song is a story song. Some of you may know this story about a universalist minister, John Murray. He was in England and had some personal issues, wanted to get away, and sailed to America on a ship called the Hand in Hand. 
and he wasn't really looking to be a minister here, but where he landed, they were looking for a minister. And he says, no, 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 I'm, I'm not good for this job. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah. And so finally he said, okay, if my ship is still here on Sunday, I'll preach for you. And guess what? There was no wind, and his ship was stuck in the bay. So he preached, and it was a match made in heaven, and uh, basically did a great job of bringing universalism over to America for us. So uh, please join me in singing this story song about John Murray. John Murray sailed on the hand in hand, and the ship got stuck in a bar of sand. So he put on his boots, and he reached dry land to preach the story in school too. <laughs> Good morning everyone. My name is Casey Marie Pandell and it is my joy and honor to worship with you all here today. Our call to worship comes from Elizabeth Wynne. It is called Our Journey is to Transform. As Unitarian Universalists, our journey is to transform the big and the small, to transform ourselves, to transform the world. Universalism means no one is outside the circle of love, and no one is disposable. We stubbornly seek out the spark of the divine in each other, no matter what. Interdependence means that none of us is truly free until we are all free, and our thriving is bound up in the Earth's thriving. None of us is truly free until we are all free. We struggle for liberation from the violence of white supremacy, sexism, ableism, classism, and heterosexism. Our covenants mean that we make promises to our communities to honor, love, and justice above all else. No one is truly free until we are all free. when you pray some believe muhammad allah or buddha are the way is there no god or a pantheon of gods up in the sky i'll honor your choices and you can honor mine whether you are red black yellow brown the world a present 
world give the gift of your acceptance give the world a present give the gift of your acceptance some believe that God's a him and some say he's a her does God live here in our hearts or out in the universe Gandhi was a Hindu Martin Luther King a Christian regardless of religion they knew was the mission They call you Israeli and they call me an American I look at you and I don't see a country I just see my friend I pray we're in each other's lives for a long, long time Cause I honor your choices and you are mine We are one Thank you. Good morning. So I want to tell a story about muddy children. Over 200 years ago, in a small house in a small town on the edge of a forest of very big trees in the state of New Hampshire, there lived a small boy, and his name was Hosea Ballou. Hosea loved mud. He liked it when it was soft and squishy, and he liked it when it was thick and sticky. If it didn't rain quite enough, that wasn't a problem. Hosea would carry water to the dirt and create glorious mud puddles all of his own. He liked to poke sticks into puddles and see how deep the mud was. He liked to make mud pies and build mud dams. He liked to jump in puddles hard with both feet and make the muddy water splash really high so that the mud splattered all over his brother's and sister's clothes too. And he loved to step in puddles very slowly so that the mud oozed up just a little bit at a time between his toes. Yes, Hosea loved mud. Now, you might imagine not everybody in his family liked mud quite as much as Hosea did. His mother had died when he was not quite two, so his older sisters took care of him. And his sister, who did the laundry and scrubbed the family's dirty clothes in big wash tubs, did not like having to scrub all that mud off of Hosea's clothes or off everybody else's clothes after Hosea had stomped in mud puddles extra hard. His other older sister, who kept the little children clean, didn't like having to scrub all that mud off Hosea. And Hosea didn't like having baths either, especially when it meant he had to stand in a wash tub in front of the fire and have water dumped over his head. But his sisters loved him, so they took him home and washed him and dried him and made him clean. Then Hosea's sisters went to their father and they said, Father! Please tell Hosea to stop playing in the mud. Hosea, said his father very sternly, you should not play in the mud. Why, asked Hosea, because asking questions was another thing he loved to do. <laughs> because, said his father, who was one of the preachers in the Baptist church the family went to, just as we try to live a good life to be kind to other people and to follow God's plan, we try to stay clean. Oh, yes, Father, Hosea said. And after that day, he tried to stay clean, but it wasn't easy. He stopped stomping in the mud puddles on purpose and 
splashing the muddy water everywhere, and he stopped making enormous mud pies. But sometimes mud is just there. And he had to walk through the mud to get across the yard to gather eggs from the chickens. He had to walk in the mud to feed the pigs. And sometimes, if he was already muddy from doing his chores, he played in the mud. <laughs> Just a little bit and got even muddier. His sisters, who loved him, took him home and washed him and dried him and made him all clean. But they also went to their father and said, Father, please tell Hosea to stop playing in the mud. Hosea, said his father, even more sternly this time, you must not play in the mud. Yes, father, Hosea said. He was sad because he had truly tried not to get muddy, most of the time anyway. Are you very angry with me, father? I am disappointed in you, Hosea. I am a little angry with you. Hosea hung his head and kicked at the dirt with his toes. Then he tried to look up just a little to ask, do you still love me? Hosea, said his father, and his father didn't sound stern anymore. I will always love you, Hosea, no matter what you do. Even if I get muddy again? <laughs> yes. Even if I get really, really muddy? Yes. Even if I get mud all the way up to my eyebrows and between my fingers and my toes and in my hair? Even then, his father said with a smile. Then he added, very stern again, but remember, Hosea, you must stay clean. I'll remember and I'll try, Hosea promised. And he did. He stayed clean most of the time anyway. As he grew up, he stopped liking mud quite so much, but he still liked to ask questions about what and how and why. Father, Hosea said when he was a teenager, how can it be that our church believes that God will only let in 1,000 people to heaven, even if many of those 1,000 people lead good lives? His father didn't have an answer for that question. Father, Hosea asked, if I had the power to create a living creature, and if I knew that the creature would have a miserable life, would suffer and die, and then go to hell and be miserable forever, and I went ahead and created it anyway, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? And would I be good or bad? His father didn't have an answer for that question either. So Hosea had to find his own answers. So he read the Bible. He went to some universalist churches and asked more questions there. And at the age of 19, Hosea decided that he believed in universal salvation, which is the idea that Everyone, everywhere, everyone in the universe will be given salvation. Eventually, everyone will be saved from hell. And not only did Hosea believe that God would let more than a thousand people into heaven, Hosea Ballou believed God would eventually let everyone into heaven, good and bad. How can you believe that? asked his father. How can you believe that God would let bad people into heaven? Because, Father, I remember what you told me when I was small. I believe that even if God is disappointed with people or a little angry with them, God will always love them and want them to be happy no matter what they do and no matter how muddy they are. That's our story for today. We're going to sing our children and their teachers out to their religious education classes. All right, here we go. We hold you in our love as you go, as you go. May your heart be at peace as you go. To nurture the spark of your precious
Our reading today is No One is Outside the Circle of Love from our UUA president, Reverend Dr. Susan Frederick Gray, as well as Reverend Erica Hewitt. You'll notice there's a slide up that has a response for you. I will indicate when it is time for you to respond. We know that hurt moves through the world, perpetuated by action, inaction, and indifference. Our values call us to live in the reality of the heartbreak of our world, remembering that no one is outside the circle of love. We who are Unitarian Universalists not only affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, we also affirm the inherent wholeness of every being, despite apparent brokenness. No one is outside the circle of love. We know that things break or break down, promises, friendship, sobriety, hope, communication. This breaking happens because our human hearts and our very institutions are frail and imperfect. We make mistakes. Life is messy. No one is outside the circle of love. With compassion as our guide, we seek the well-being of all people. We seek to dismantle systems of oppression that undermine our collective humanity. We believe that we are here to guide one another toward love. No one is outside the circle of love. No matter how fractured we once were or still are, we can make whole people of ourselves. We are whole at our core because the great, unnameable, sometimes inconceivable love in which we live. No one is outside the circle of love.
I've noticed a lot in my life that people love asking, so what church do you go to? And for a really long time, I didn't have an answer for that. It wasn't my thing at all. Even when I met Reverend Jason from Fullerton, the answer was, oh, no, thank you. I don't do church. But when I first became a Unitarian Universalist and people asked me that question, when I answered it, they would shoot me a puzzled look before asking, Unitarian Universalist, what is that? Now, despite being able to tick our faith on a box on hospital intake forms, it's clear that we aren't winning any popularity contests. And that's not because we don't have something wonderful to offer. Trust me, nothing would have gotten me in the door short of something wonderful to offer. But people just don't seem to know who we are. I can't blame them. At the time, my answer always hovered somewhere between, well, we're kind of Christian adjacent, but we're not really Christian. I like to tell people we're a hippie church. That doesn't help either, but I still think it's true <laughs> in a really good way. But I think that answer I used to give kind of further served to confuse people. And in the few years since, and throughout my seminary journey, I'm finding that people hear the Unitarian bit, and they completely miss the Universalist one. And our Unitarianism is great, and when people know us by that word, they seem to know us for being a liberal thinking faith for our exceptionally New England roots in the United States, and for being affluent and well-educated, sometimes with a side of, hey, didn't you folks have a seance phase thrown in for good measure? And we did, by the way. You can thank the transcendentalists for that. <laughs> While all of this is true, it's a simplification of Unitarianism, and worse still, it is an outright erasure of our Universalist roots, which themselves are deep and rich and extend all the way into the earliest centuries of Christianity. Our Universalist identity as a part of our greater UU one should be celebrated. And perhaps we as a community are a little bit disconnected from the history and its meaning as being a part of our faith. And while there's much history there, I promise I'm not gonna go over like a thousand years of it today, but I do wanna draw your attention to a particular piece of our Universalist theology and history and what it could mean for us today Championed by one of our forebears, who we heard a little bit about, Hosea Ballou, he was one of our prominent Universalist ministers of the 19th century, and it's a piece of theology that really gets to the heart of our namesake. The universalism in Unitarian Universalism refers to our salvation, the how and why we are saved into the afterlife. Now, traditionally speaking, most Universalists in the 1800s believed that there was a brief period of time between death and the afterlife in which a person's soul experienced a sort of residual punishment for their misdeeds on earth. This period allowed for a cleansing of the soul of sorts and acted as a catalyst for the soul to move into heaven. You die, you have the period of cleansing, and then you can go to heaven. Ballou's perspective, however, was much different. Known colloquially as ultra-universalism, we are all sinners, full stop. But that sinful nature does not preclude us from the love of an all-loving God. We are human, we are here, we are God's children, and therefore, we are loved and we are worthy of being saved. And so shall we be. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It cannot be earned. It cannot be bought. God's love is eternal, and we deserve it because we are God's children. Now, an interesting point of historical context, this version of universalism, universalism at all, did not go over particularly well with one of our preeminent Unitarian ministers, William Ellery Channing. He believed in a theology of self-cultivation, which is the idea that we better ourselves morally, religiously, and ethically on earth in order to earn a place in heaven. 
his ideas could be considered a salvation of character, and they leave the work of being a good human to the individual. But in true Unitarian fashion, it surrounds becoming more moral and whole through mostly intellectual means. There's work to be done to earn a place in heaven and in the world. And indeed, Channing considered humans incorrigible sinners, or in other words, completely unable to be reformed. Ballou, on the other hand, believed there was no quality of humans that made us beyond redemption, and therefore we couldn't be not redeemed. These two would have this as a point of contention for a long time, and although they never met face to face, would argue with each other via different sermons over the years. Ballou's viewpoint pushed the bounds of various versions of Christianity, and in the end, his argument was clear. If God is ever present and all-knowing, our salvation can't be changed, nor need it be so, by our works here on earth. We're here and we'll be saved. In recent years, though, this view of ultra-universalism has been challenged by some, and rightfully so. In the light of recent tragedies in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas, and with the war in the Ukraine still raging, it is difficult to stomach the idea of, we're all saved. We can't discount the discomfort of knowing that if this version of universalism is true, then the owners of enslaved people are in heaven right now alongside the souls of those that they enslaved. Reckoning with this good and evil is no easy feat, and I don't pretend there's a perfect answer to the question that was posed by the Reverend Mark Morrison Reed in his 2017 lecture, The Black Hole in the White Psyche. How do we reconcile God's goodness with the existence of evil? In the context of Charleston, the context of Jim Crow, the context of slavery, what is the meaning of black suffering? Why has such calamity been directed at African Americans? If God is just and loving, there must be a reason. And if there is no reason, one is led to the conclusion that God is neither just nor loving. Now certainly as a white, heterosexual, cisgender woman, I can only grapple with that which I know. And I feel as though my answer to something beyond my own experience may fall painfully short of the full aspect of such a question. I can listen fully and bear witness to the spiritual explorations of those who experience differs from mine. Unfortunately, that question cannot possibly be answered in one sermon alone. The broader implications of evil being allowed to triumph into the afterlife land of the good are uncomfortable questions to say the least. And there's no good way to insist upon Ballou's idea of ultra-universalism when there's places where so much harm has been done. Ultra-universalism, while an intriguing idea, falls exceptionally and painfully short in practice. How do we as a society sort through the theological idea that God is all loving and just when violence, pain, and unjust practices are a thread that have been woven into the very fabric of human history? How do we believe in an all-encompassing love when some faith traditions require a theology of guilt and suffering in order to earn a place among the heavens? This is a question that I often considered in my atheistic youth, and the pressing silence that I continue to receive for an answer as I make my way towards ordained ministry makes the question all the more real and all the more relevant. How do we continue to seek hope and justice rooted in a love for each other that mirrors the love set forth by Ballou's version of universalism? The answer is far more complex than I think even the question itself. We understand that there is harm that can be done with this kind of all or nothing theology. And while it's a lovely idea in thought, 
the practice is much more complicated. Insisting, for example, that someone forgive the person who did them harm under the guise of universal love serves only to turn people away from the work of choosing to love can do. Similarly, with some traditional faiths holding the idea that God's love is out of reach of their believers, similarly or in worse fashion than Channing believed and championed. This too can lead to an uncertainty of worth and fears of being unloved. If God doesn't love me, who will? We must be cautious with the implications of all loving all the time. A trauma-informed approach to faith is key to understanding that there is privilege in believing and proselytizing and all encompassing all the time love. However, in this explanation of our history and this exploration of this part of our theology, which I admittedly hold out hope for in some ways, what I can offer you is this. We don't know where we go after this life, if we go anywhere at all. And as you use, there's a broad range of ideas of where we may go. But applying the universalism of our faith tradition still has a place of practicality, even if it is frustratingly muddy in terms of theological satisfaction. Our Unitarian Universalist principles leave space for this all are worthy peace, and they actually ask that work of us. We each have inherent worth and dignity, and we are charged to treat our siblings in this life the same. We are asked to strive for justice and equity, and to do so compassionately. The way we respond to those around us, particularly when they have been hurtful or cruel, says far more about us and our own character than it does about them. The ability to maintain being compassionate and empathetic in the face of wrongs is challenging. And it's worth noting that perhaps not every wrong deserves our specific love or particular forgiveness. Protecting oneself from hurt is in no way a crime, and perhaps the compassion required there is sometimes more for ourselves than for others. For the modern Unitarian Universalist, one who believes that we are a faith of liberation and one that strives to create our faith into that ideal, the idea of universalism, of universal love as a means of meaning making, is one that will take careful examination. And it's worth thinking critically about. Something that rewards evil with the promise of heaven is something can, that cannot be taken at face value alone, not when it fails to challenge the realities of centuries of white supremacy, of patriarchy, of colonialism, of heteronormativity. As for the usefulness of living and loving actively into our faith, it may yet be another tool that can be employed in an effort to make the world more just and we all, each of us, have the power to choose how and when it is used. Amen. Please rise as you are comfortable for our closing song, Come and Go With Me. Come and go with me to the
Unitarian Universalist congregations are fully self-supporting, meaning that members and friends raise all funds for the operating budget, ministries, and program of the church. We are ever grateful for your gifts of time, treasure, and talent. OCUUC amplifies that spirit of generosity by sharing half of the plate we receive with an organization that shares our values. This month, we are supporting Stand Up For Kids Orange County. Stand Up For Kids Orange County, established in 1990, serves homeless and at-risk youth and young adults 25 and younger. Programs in Orange County offer street outreach, drop-in center, school-based, preventions, and apartment and housing support. There are multiple ways in which you can support the church and this organization. You can mail a check, you can go through our website, or you can use an app called Venco Mobile. The choice is yours. All the information is on our website should you need it. As always, thank you for your generosity. Forsaken by family, dear jaded and quiet, dear tough and defiant, I pray that I'm heard. And I pray that this works. I pray that my prayer been used as a sword against you and your heart, against you and your word. I pray that this prayer is a plowshare of sorts, that it might break you open, it might help you grow. I pray that your body gets all that it needs, and if you don't want healing, I just pray for peace. I pray that your burden gets lighter each day. I pray the mean voice in your head goes away. I pray that you honor the grief as it comes. I pray you can feel all the life in your lungs. I pray that if you go all day being brave, that you can go home, go to bed, feeling safe. I pray you forgiven, I pray you forgive, I pray you set boundaries and openly live, I pray that you feel you are worth never leaving, I pray that you know I will always believe. and unseen. Amen for the workers, the hungry, the houseless. Amen for the lonely and recently spouseless. Amen for the queers and their closeted peers. Amen for the bully who hold in their tears. Amen. 
Amen for the mothers of little black sons. Amen for the kids who grow up scared of guns. Amen for the addict, the ashamed and the over. Amen for the callous, the wise and the sober. Amen for the ones who want life to be over. Amen for the leaders who lose their composure. Amen for the parents who just lost their Forgot to mention before I sing that we sing that that was a little preview. The songwriter Spencer LaJoy will be here here on Thursday at seven, and it will be on Zoom and live, but not recorded. So you need to show up either on Zoom or here in the room. So please come. Spencer's making their first uh, countrywide tour, so we're so excited to have them here. So I don't know about you, but that song is like pierced my heart and I have played it so many times. I've worn, worn out the record, if it were a record. <laughs> so now we're going to sing our operatory response song, a song that puts our intentions into words and expresses our gratitude for the many gifts we share. We gather, together we gather as one for peace, love, and justice for Now is the time that we honor the important events in our lives. You are invited, one and all, whether you are member, friend, or visitor here today, to participate in our weekly ritual of joys and sorrows. So let's take a deep breath. Perhaps you come here today holding something close to your heart, moments from the last days or hours that have struck you at your core. If you'd like to honor such a profound joy or sorrow, you are invited to do so. If you are a rumor, you are invited to come forward and light your candle. If you would like to share your joy or sorrow, you can write it out on a slip of paper provided and hand it to me. And if you are a Zoomer, you are invited to write your joy or sorrow in the chat. Once the rumors are done lighting candles, I will read the joys and sorrows shared out loud as Lori writes, lights candles for our Zoomers.
Tatiana would like to share the joy that yet another sponsor joined our OCUUC Ukrainian Refugee Sponsorship Club, and there are now five of you. Well done. <laughs> Craig Preston, excuse me, Craig P, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, is sharing a joy today that any action to move us to a clean energy future is worth celebrating. Thank you, Senator Joe Manchin, for, for action. It's a good change. And Linda C. says that they are celebrating with great joy the wedding of their grandson, Alex, to their new wife, Sharon, tomorrow in Sicily. Yay. What a nice bite. It's probably a little hot, but gosh, lovely. Uh, and Kathleen M. asks to light a birthday candle of joy for Mark R., who is celebrating his 72nd birthday on Tuesday. Happy birthday, Mark. Jan M. has a, has a joy to share. What a great time playing golf with Nina and Janine for their auction event, and we need to do it again. <laughs> and finally, a sorrow from Justin B., Today we will euthanize our beloved family dog, Tonka. We are blessed to have had him 11 years together and will miss him very much. Justin, we hold you and your family and sweet Tonka in our hearts today. And we know that not all joys and sorrows are shared here in person. Whether they are in our hearts or said aloud, we hold space in this room and in our community for you. Let us hold all the love and of our joys and celebrations and all the hurts and sadness, both spoken and silent. Please join Lori in a spirit of prayer or meditation. Let's take a deep breath. Spirit of life and love, Dear God of all nations, there is so much work to do. We have only begun to imagine justice and mercy. Help us hold fast to our vision of what we can be. May we see the hope in our history and find the courage and the voice to work for that constant rebirth of freedom and justice. That is our dream. Blessed be, amen. Please join us in extinguish, extinguish the flame of our chalice and say together, we extinguish our chalice, but not the light of truth, the warmth of the community, or the fire of commitment. This we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are a congregation made up of people who all believe differently. And yet, when we gather together, we make up one loving community. We need not think alike to love alike. If you are a guest, a visitor, or someone who hasn't yet been known to us, I invite you to become a part of this beloved community. We encourage you to write in the chat your name and where you are from so we can welcome you. If you'd like to know more about our church, including programming for our youth and children, please contact us at hello at ocuuc.org and we will help you get connected. In addition, we invite you to sign up for our weekly email called The Blast at blast at ocuuc.org. We want everyone to feel a part of this beloved community. So please reach out and we will help you get connected. After the benediction, we will have a short period where everyone can wave and say hello. After that, you can choose to be put in a, into Zoom breakout groups for 20 minutes or so. We invite you to check in and get to know the people in your group and welcome any visitors. 
Now some for announcement. So don't forget, as Beth was mentioning, this Thursday, the concert in the Daniels Hall are live on Zoom. And then we also have a save the date for Music Under the Stars on August 20th at 7 p.m. And then we, you can also check out our website for weekly mi meetings for Fiction Book Group, Social Hour, and Stitch Witch. And I'm gonna give it ba back to Casey for benediction. And don't forget that Camp de Beneville Pines is coming up in October. Uh, it will be OU, OC. it's you guys in tapestry. And I would love to see you all there. I'm Tapestry's intern minister, and I'll be there that weekend as well. Our universalism as a part of our Unitarian Universalist faith is rooted in a deep, all-encompassing love that excludes none. We know that this theology can be problematic in practice, and it is worth examining and finding the best bits of it for our own use. May we find meaningful ways to embody that universal love for ourselves, for others, and that are in ways enriching and liberation-minded, and that fulfill our curiosity, our criticism, and our acceptance. May it be so. Amen, shalom, salam, namaste, and blessed be. Go now in peace. May the light within you be a blessing to the world. Let us go out and all do our part. Let us go out, bring joy to each heart. Let us go out with indifference destroyed. Let us go out with joy one more time. Let us go out and all do our part. Let us go out, bring joy to each heart. Let us go out with indifference destroyed. This service is over, let our service continue.